G'day and welcome to The Rocks Cry Out. I'm Indiana Joe and today we've come on this, quite frankly, freezing cold day, full of the mist and fog, to Ost Cliff. Now behind us, just over there, is the Severn Bridge that connects England to Wales. Over 32,000 people drive across that bridge every single day. And I wonder how many of them realise that directly underneath them, there are dinosaurs in the cliffs. Yes, we're going to be discovering dinosaurs, fossil shells and the lot today at The Rocks Cry Out. But our first thing we need to discover is a little bit more about the cliffs here. Now notice the big visitor sign. Notice the little sentence that it has at the top, a drowned desert. Now that is going to be key to unlocking the mystery here. So come and join me today at The Rocks Cry Out. Let's explore Oscliff. Let's find some dinosaurs. So to begin with, we need to get a good idea of the geology, because the geology is extremely important. You see, nearly 2,000 years ago, the Romans settled at the top of these cliffs, along the Severn Estuary. And the reason they settled here was because of the geology. It was extremely important to them. Why? We'll find that out later. But for now, let's learn a bit about the geology. And we've got some samples down here. OK, let's uh, learn about some of the rocks here. Now, right down at the bottom of the cliff, you have this rock. This is the Mercia mudstone. Now, this has been dated to about 210 million years old. Now, I say about because I have to be quite careful. The age may change tomorrow. You see, since 1989, it has changed at least two times. There have been at least three different dates assigned to this rock. So, it's around 210 million years old, according to the secular dating. Now, I don't agree with the dates, and we'll explain a little bit why later, but for now, forget about the dates, let's just learn a bit about the rock. Um, it's red, it's got lots of iron in it, and uh, it's made out of a mud, so it's very, very finely, finely grained. And there's not a lot of fossils in here either. Now, this rock is called Triassic, as are some of the other rocks around here. Now, above that, you have this rock, the big bone bed. Again, Triassic, the layer directly above the Mercia mudstone. And it's full of bones, as you would imagine from the name, but it's not just got bones. This rock is also full of shells. It's full of teeth. It's full of scales. And this rather interesting stuff down here. You see, this turns out to be fossil poo. Coprolite is the proper word, but the bone bed is full of it, all the way throughout Oss Cliff here. Uh, it's all marine stuff, it's all been washed together and dumped down together very, very quickly. It's quite a remarkable place. And then on top of the bone bed, we have got the Green Marl, which is again another mudstone. No fossils to be found in there, but on top of that, you've got the Lias, which is made up of shale, which is again a mudstone, full of fossil shells, and you have the limestone which is also full of fossil shells, as well as uh, little bits of fish scales and things like that. Now this and this, the Lias, is classed as Jurassic. So it's a slightly different type of rock to the Triassic. Here we go. You can see what we found here, a big bit of dinosaur bone. Can you see the black stuff moving alongside here? Now, um, it's not technically dinosaur, as in the way that most people would think of it. This is actually a big swimming dinosaur, one of the big marine reptiles, often called swimming dinosaurs. You know, like the big sort of plesiosaurs or pliosaurs or ichthyosaur bones. So this was a great big swimming dinosaur that got caught up, buried and fossilised with all the other creatures very, very quickly. And it's a big clue to working out the true story of Ost. What do I mean? Well, as we go around, we're going to be asking ourselves some questions. The first one is, how did these cliffs get here? The second one is, how long did it take for them to get here? The third one is, how would we actually prove it? And then the last question is, what has it got to do with the Bible? Because yes, I'm a Christian, I make no apologies about it, I believe the Bible is true from the beginning to the end. And Ost Cliff has a story to tell which has got something to do with the Bible. What is that? Well, let's go find out more. So 
So what is the standard geological story here at Ost? Well, the red Mercia mudstone at the bottom is supposed to represent a desert about 210 million years ago. And then at one point, the desert became engulfed by a flood. It became drowned. Now we know this because the two beds that it produced that are above the Mercia mudstone, the uh, bone bed and the Jurassic Lias, are full of marine fossils. So they were laid down in water. Okay, couple of questions. The first one is, how do we actually know this is a desert? What evidence is there? Why do they think that this is a desert? And the second question is, if this was a desert that then got engulfed by a flood, how big was that flood? Well, the fog is lifting and you can finally see the Severn Bridge behind us, which of course would not have been there 2,000 years ago when the Romans arrived. Oh, you remember we referenced the Romans earlier. You see, the Romans settled here because of the geology. The particular part of the geology is actually these crystals here. Um, these are gypsum crystals. It's a type of salt and you remember the Romans were famous for building fantastic buildings and different houses and covering them in beautiful paintings. And to do all of that they needed to use plaster. And you see this gypsum is an extremely important part of producing that plaster. And so they settled here so they could come to Ostcliff and mine this gypsum. Because you see it's all over here. You can see the bands running all throughout the cliff all the way over here. Okay, what has that got to do with our puzzle? Well, you see, it's actually the presence of gypsum. You can see it here. The Romans knew it was here. They came here to mine it. It's still here today. And you see, gypsum challenges the idea that these red beds were actually a desert. Because what you will find is in order to make crystals, you need to have a crystal solution, a dissolved solution with all of that salt in it so that it can crystallize into these big bands. And in order to do that, you need to have a lot of water. But not just water that drowned a place, you need to have that water present while the rock is being formed. In other words, these cliffs were not formed in a desert, they were formed by water and they are full of these gypsum crystals. There's another question we were asking earlier as well, which was uh, how big are these beds? Because if we know how big this red bed is, we know how big that flood was. Oh, you remember we had these red beds that were supposed to be the desert, which now aren't the desert, but they were buried by a big flood. Whether you believe in the Bible or don't, everybody agrees that these were covered by water at some point. But how much water and how far did it extend? So how big was this flood? Well, the red rocks here at Ost are part of the Triassic rocks. Um, that's what Triassic refers to. It means the three big rocks that make up the Triassic. Okay, where do we find them? Well, we drove down from Shropshire yesterday and we followed the red beds the entire way down. So they go at least that 100 miles. But then you find that they go all the way down to the south coast of Britain as well, another 100 miles. Then you find that they go across all the way up to Scotland. Then you find they go across into Europe and you find they even turn up over in Australia. That's basically what the same red beds are. They don't just stop there. The most famous of the red beds turn up in the Grand Canyon. These beds go all over the world. And the boundary that you can see behind me where the red rocks meet the green rocks on the top where that flood came is everywhere all throughout the Triassic. In other words, the flood was not just here at Ost. The flood covered everywhere where the red rocks were and the red rocks go all over the planet. In other words, this flood covered the red rocks, whether you believe they were a desert or not, at some point in Earth's history, covered all over the planet, full of water. This is starting to sound a lot like a worldwide flood. But there's one final piece of evidence that we can piece together to actually prove that these rocks here at Ost and all around the planet were formed very, very quickly in water. So, the last piece to the puzzle, fossils. We've already found quite a few today. Um, the big dinosaur bits, the scallop shells we found earlier, and I've got this great big oyster bed here. These are literally littered all over the place here at Ostcliff. Now, um, what can we learn from them? Well, the first thing is, is that we know these are oyster fossils because they look like oyster fossils. Um, they're exactly the same as the ones that are alive today. 
So if you want to believe in the evolution of millions of years, all you can prove is that in 200 supposed million years, oysters have turned into oysters. They've remained exactly the same. Same with the pectin shells as well. And the dinosaurs? Well, there aren't too many of them about today. You see, in the fossil record throughout all of the world, you can only prove one of three things. Either creatures have remained exactly the same, creatures have gotten smaller and worse off, or creatures have gone extinct, just like the dinosaurs. You see, there is no evolution in the fossil record whatsoever. Okay, let's deal with the question. How long did it take these cliffs to actually form? And how would we know? And the fossils are a big key to that. It has been a well-established principle in the Rocks Cry Out series that fossilization has got nothing to do with time, but everything to do with a process. And it really is very, very important. Time will destroy your creature long before you have a chance to turn it into a fossil. Just think of this very shallow little channel that we have here, the small wave action. If you had a shell down here on the foreshore, it would only take a few years at the most until it's completely disintegrated. Not millions of years whatsoever. You haven't got the millions of years of time. The natural processes will destroy it long before you have a chance to fossilize it. If you want to make a fossil, whether that be a shell, a pectin shell, or a massive great big dinosaur fossil, you need to bury it very quickly and very deeply without the presence of oxygen. And if you want to do that, you need to bury these cliffs very very quickly as well. These cliffs need to form quickly with water rushing sideways washing all these creatures into position. Remember that slab of rock we found earlier with the poo and the shells and the scales and the teeth in it? They've all been washed together very very quickly. So there's a clue. If you've got a rock that is full of fossils you know that it has been formed very quickly indeed. Let's start to wrap everything up and just get a full idea, a full picture, a full story of the cliffs here at Ost. So let's bring it all together and give you the big conclusion for here at Ost. What have we learned? Well, to begin with, the great big red rocks, the Mercian mudstone, were clearly not formed in a desert. The presence of gypsum shouts that, and the history with the Romans tells us that as well. Okay, if they weren't formed in a desert, how were they formed? Well, everybody agrees that they were certainly drowned, but the evidence points to them being formed in a great big flood as well. So how big was this flood? Well, we've learned about how big these red rocks are. They go all over the planet. They were formed in water. They were covered by water. The Jurassic limestone was also formed by water. This was a worldwide flood. We also can learn how quick they had to form as well, because simply the presence of fossils inside these cliffs here tell us that they were formed very, very quickly. Because if you take a lot of time to make fossils and you take a lot of time to make cliffs, the processes will destroy your creatures long before you have chance to fossilize them. If these cliffs are full of fossils, which they are, and you find that evidence all around the beach here, these cliffs were formed very, very quickly indeed. Okay. What else do we know? Well, the Jurassic rocks on the top, they go all over the world as well. In fact, that's what Jurassic means. They were the rocks named after the ones in the Jura Mountains in Germany. You can go to Australia, India, Asia, England, Scotland, all over into America and Canada. The Jurassic rocks are there as well. They go all over the world, all buried by water. And we know one more important thing as well. The Bible tells us about a worldwide flood, one that covered the whole of the planet, one that was colossal in its destruction, that ripped up land masses, churned it all up and dumped it all down just like we see here. You see, what we read in the Bible fits perfectly with not only what we see here at Ost, but with what we see all around the planet. And it makes a very important point. What was the purpose of the flood? and you find that it was God's judgment on man's wickedness. That is a very, very important point to understand, that not only there is a God, but he is also the judge, and he will judge not just back then, but at one point in the future. But just like in the Bible, God provided a way out of the coming judgment in the flood waters by Noah's ark, the one that he instructed Noah to build, which saved him and all of his family. Just like the second judgment that is coming again, he has provided a way for us to be free, and that is through his son, Jesus Christ. He is our ark, he is our saviour, and I urge you to, if you haven't already, put your trust in him today. 
I hope you've enjoyed us here exploring Oscliff. If you want to find out more about the Rocks Cry Out project or more about the different work that we're doing with Creation Research, or if you would like to order the book that accompanies this little video presentation, go to www.therockscryout.co.uk. You will find a whole host of information about not just Ost, but all the other locations we've been filming. God bless, see you next time, and happy hunting. I will see you very soon. Thank you.